Hello and welcome once again to Talk of the Town. It's the Port Adelaide Premiership champion. Hello, Warren Treadray. Seb and Sam, how are we, boys? We go again and don't worry about smelling it. It is here. <laughs> you can taste it this week. Sam McClure is the Chief Footy Reporter for the Nine Network. Hello to you, sir. Hello, boys. Looking forward to it already. Let's get straight into it because the talk of the town is the selection table today. And in somewhat of a surprise for some in the footy industry, Harley Bannell will play his first AFL game since August of 2017. Treadray, should he have been picked? Well, I don't, I'm not a member of the fitness staff. I'm not a member of the coaching. But from the outside, I just see this obsession. I know we all have it in the media. Fans have it. Are we going to be right for round one? Well, this is round two, but it's the equivalent of round one because they've had a total restart. I'd argue that he's probably in a better position to play all those weeks ago in round one about eight weeks ago because he would have had potentially matched him had he been fit at the time. I worry here, what have they had? Four or five contested match him situations. I get there's no uh, lower leg to prepare him in that situation, but he's class. And if he's absolutely confident, but I'd have to say that Melbourne could not be 100% confident because he hasn't done the amount of work. And you're throwing him into a situation where every time back from a, a, a big break, whether it's a preseason game or round one, we always see players over on their haunches, tight hamstrings, torn muscles. This is recipe for disaster for the Demons. So I would just sit back and go, let's not get obsessed by this first return matchup. Let's give him a couple more weeks and prepare him longer. But they don't listen to us, clearly. Let's get your take in a moment, Sam. But first, Matthew Lloyd agreed with you when he spoke about this issue on Footy Classified. Uh, here's Harley Bennell training. Uh, and one thing Simon Woodman, Goodwin did say today is, uh, on top of isolation, he's done everything right the last three weeks. And to me, three weeks is the big thing. I would not play Harley Bennell. As tempting as it is, he's the type of player they need. They lack the player that he is. But you want him to be a three-year player for you. And I just think at AFL intensity against Carlton this weekend, he's not done any of that. I'd give him, why not give him five and six weeks? Not three weeks at training back with the guys. To me, that isn't enough. Lloydy there on Footy Classified says he wouldn't pick Harley Bennell. Sam, what's your take? Yeah, I feel a bit awkward going up against uh, two of the all-time greats in Lloyd and Treadray. But look, I see it a little bit differently. I, I completely understand the take. Of what, you know, why would you take the risk? And Lloyd talks about you know wanting to be medium to long-term player, not a short-term player. But let's not forget, Treaders. You know, it's not as though they they try things differently at Fremantle. You know, they they absolutely trialed him for Peel for weeks, sometimes months at a time before putting him out on the big stage. And it didn't seem to work. You know, the extra run in the legs playing for Peel didn't do much for him injury-wise. So maybe they're just thinking that he is as ready as he's ever going to be. Um, one of the great fitness minds in, in sport, in Darren Burgess, is the guy that Simon Goodwin said ultimately um, will make the decision. Treaders, he worked with him at Port. You know, he's been at Arsenal. He's come back to footy. He's highly regarded by the Melbourne players. So clearly he is of the opinion that he can't do much more um, I just think it's it's great. I mean, selfishly, it's great for fans of that game, Melbourne and Carlton, to have someone like a, a Benel back. Eddie Betts is going to be back to make his his second debut, you know, 15 years after first playing for Carlton in 2005. Quite incredible. Harry Mackay's back. So it adds a, it adds a bit of interest to um, an otherwise kind of flat contest. You know, let's not forget that no one's expecting any great heights from Carlton this year and they're both 0-1. Um, so it's, it's a game that Melbourne desperately need to win. Tread is on a scale. Absolutely. I think Darren... On, no, Darren, the Darren, sorry, on the Darren Burgess uh, situation, clearly, I think they're in a better situation. It's probably the best sports science department that Harley Bennell's probably worked under. So you give it a tick, and I know him very well, good mates with him. I'd be confident to think that he's done me enough of work. And he's clearly more of a specialist than I am. But I just worry that if it doesn't go right, this could be curtains. Yeah. Harley Bennell at his best, Treaders. Where does he rank on a scale of... Telly Tubby to Freddy Krueger in terms of scariness for his opposition. <laughs> oh, well, which one are we talking? Are we talking the kid that the under 18s who ripped it apart or, you know, junior football? You sit there and go, well, that's Freddy Krueger at his best. He's got the weapons. He's got the speed. He can do it. He can use it. He's a great decision maker. But we haven't seen that for some time. So that slips down the rung a fair bit. I'll tell you what, this could be one of the greatest recruits of all time if they can get it right, the Demons, because he's clearly a top three pick, wasn't he? A top two pick when he went to the Suns all those years yep. ago. Fremantle paid him a fortune to come home and gave up the house for him, gave up the whole farm, and it didn't work. Well, if you can get him for nothing and he can turn into something, 
then this would be a massive tick. Don't worry about first round draft picks. This kid could be the, the draft pick of the year if he can stay fit and we all hope he can. Sam, let's move on to a good story from Richmond. This is Jack Higgins, who some feared may never play again, had brain surgery last year, which robbed him of being part of the 2019 Premiership for the Tigers. But such an exciting talent and a popular player, and he will play in round two. Yeah, he's going to take on the pies on the big stage Thursday night. It's just a pity there's not going to be anyone in the stands because uh, people would go to watch Jack Higgins and you're right, he's such a, a popular player amongst his teammates. And I, I love the way that, that Richmond have gone about it. I mean, no one's been talking about Jack Higgins up until the day before the game. And that's the way that Damien Hardwick has seemed to operate the last five years. They just like going under the radar and concentrating on the big things. They don't need to talk to talk the talk because they do it all out in the field and um, you know, he, he, despite the fact that he's, he's so loved, he's also a really important player because he adds a little bit, bit of diversity um, up forward. He can be thrown in the middle. He's a bit of a live wire for the Tigers. Um, but what a story, Seb. I mean, you know, this guy, I think we were all fearing for what the worst case scenario could be, the initial prognosis and having to undergo brain surgery in any capacity is a really scary thought, particularly for um, a young person in his early 20s. So to see him back, pl- to see him well again was great. To see him back playing footy well. I think we're all hoping he kicks the first goal to, um, Thursday night, aren't we? I'll be looking forward to that. Tread is another Jack, Jack Stephen. Uh, apparently has ticked all the boxes for selection at Geelong. This obviously comes a couple of weeks after being stabbed and spending a number of nights in the hospital. Jack Stephen wasn't picked for round one for Geelong. How would you feel about his selection chances? Well, I think he's playing a lot more footy than Harley Burnell. Um, you also look Jack Higgins. He's missed a significant amount of footy. I get this. This is an unusual situation. It's not a football injury. So once the non-football injury, uh, injury in this case, the stabbing and a wound is, is sorted, he's a class player. He's a four-time best in Ferris, and the Cats need him to play um, to be at his best. And if he thinks he can be at his best and he's done enough work, they think of the pre-season and preparation and fitness, once the wound's healed, off you go. Where do you put him? In the middle with Danger and Selwood or in that small forward role St Kilda had him doing uh, the last time we saw him? Oh, I'd also uh, maybe just throw him a little bit of forward, a little bit of wing. I wouldn't throw him into the cut and thrust of the centre square because they don't need him. Yeah. You, know, you can look at all the rest of the players they've got in that team. They've got enough inside mids. They could even you know, throw him at half back and just let him play. I think the most important thing is return to confidence via playing. And then get the best out of him in the next five or six weeks once he's built his workloads and his game performance. I want to talk about crowds because the South Australian government has been on your hit list a little bit, Sam McClure. But it looks like they are going to be the first to have supporters in. 2,000 fans, 1,475 Port members, 475 Crows members and 50 Adelaide Oval members, we understand, will be the first AFL match played with supporters. Yeah, they did it without uh, checking with the AFL first, which kind of (laughs) symbolises everything that's gone on between the South Australian government and the AFL. I saw Keith Thomas, the CEO of uh, your club, Tread has really praised the health authorities in the state government. I, I couldn't believe my eyes when I read it. I mean, of all the governments, they've been the most topsy-turvy of, um, of all of them. We were going to have games and we weren't going to, and then we were going to have hubs in South Australia and we weren't going to, and we were supposed to quarantine isolation in your rooms, but we're letting people on golf courses to train. Um, it's been a bizarre couple of months for the South Australian government and the health officials, but... The ends justify the means. And the end, Seb and Treaders, is that we're going to have a small amount of people allowed in the Adelaide Oval for what I think is, in, on this side of the border anyway, one of the most underrated games and fixtures of the year. I love the showdown. I love the passion between... I love the hate between these two clubs. They don't even want to be in the same hotel with each other. Like, it is awesome. Um, and, you know, hopefully we're going to see a little bit of the, the passion that was shown on the training park between Kyle Hardigan and Billy Frampton as well. I mean, it's just going to, it's going to be on, on for young and old. The fact that we get to see, have a couple of thousand fans there is great. And, and let's not forget, you know, the, this is coming at significant cost to both the AFL and the Port Adelaide Footy Club, who are the home team here. Um, but, and, and, you know, cost at the moment is really important in the game, but we are giving back to the members and the members that have, you know, had so much heartache with not being able to have footy. They've, spent their hard-earned um, on supporting their clubs and they're going to be rewarded. So I think it's brilliant. Treaders, you could have been a bit fairer to the Crows, though, couldn't you? I mean, you've taken up <laughs> 200% of the seats. You've kind of thrown them a few crumbs. I know it's a flat-out home game, but it's a pretty unfair oh, oh, oh. 
All I'll say is, for footy fans who want to go, I've got a bundle of tickets. Talk of the town. Get on our website and we'll do a giveaway. Just joking. We don't have any tickets to give away, but I just thought I'd do that for a little bit, particularly for Crows fans. But it has been very interesting, this. Paul worked on the thing was actually, the word I spoke to someone, they said, well, it's entirely our game. We could keep all the tickets, but we thought 75-25 split is okay. But then the Adelaide Oval said, we want our take for our members too. So there goes 50 to them. But I couldn't really care less. I'm just happy that fans can get involved. And, you know, realistically, the majority of people who'd want to get to this game, there'd be over 100,000 people who'd want to get to this game of football if they could. They can't. And uh, I think it's better than nothing just to have 2,000 or 2,240 people get into the ground. So, And I disagree with everything you've said there, uh, Sam, about uh, the South Australian government. They've played everyone on a fiddle, and particularly the AFL on this. They just keep... Oh, over get there. over it, Warren. That is, that is wrong. Don't you dare. Six and out, mate. Oh, <laughs> out. That is... You've been... You of all people, I wouldn't expect to be sucked in, but you have been. You've bought it. Yep. Yep, I need a vote and I'm voting Liberal. Go Steve Marshall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Sam, hey, before we move from this topic, um, as far as going around the grounds for crowds, Caroline Wilson had reported that Queensland were going to let it happen this weekend. The government appears to have pushed that back up in Queensland. Do you think that might be corrected by next week? Yeah, I think we would have had crowds this weekend in Queensland had Cara not reported it. There's, she's one of the few people in the country that can report something uh, before anyone else knows about it. And then actually, because of their reporting, have the decision changed. Oh, I think that the Chief Health Officer in South Australia, sorry, South Australia, got him on my mind, in Queensland actually gave the AFL permission to have crowds. Mm-hmm. Um, and it wasn't checked off with Anastasia Palaszczuk, the Premier, who's under pressure herself politically in the landscape there, said, as you would know. Um, and she's seen it and said, well, hang on, we're not going to be told what to do by the AFL. No, you can wait another weekend. So I think uh, as of... As of next Monday, we'll have a decision from the Queensland government that will allow crowds. We've heard from New South Wales government on uh, late Wednesday morning that they're going to allow crowds for the GWS and the Sydney games. Um, and then we'll have to wait on, on Daniel Andrews and, and the Victorian government to see when they allow crowds into the G and Marvel Stadium. Yeah, facing a big fight over the border closures, Anastasia Palaszczuk. So very important to show that she's in control, I think, yep. from a, a government strategy point of view. Uh, Victoria mentioned, Sam, Eddie Maguire reported this morning that the Victorian government favours going sort of big with crowds when they can. So that is not allowing them until they're able to allow a substantial number in somewhere in the ballpark of 10,000. So, so that's where the Victorian government is rather than doing the 2,000 that, that South Australia are this weekend. And I think uh, there will be an allowed 300 people to watch the Giants in New South Wales this weekend. Yeah, I mean, the, the Victorian one that Eddie, and I was listening um, to, to that when he was talking about it, Seb, is an interesting one. And it, it got me asking the question, who ultimately holds, holds the power with the decision-making then? I mean, if, if they're allowing small crowds to other events, is it then up to the AFL and all the clubs to see if they want to allow 2,000 in the MCG like they are in the showdown? Or do you think, Seb, it's actually up to Daniel Andrews and his chief health officer that will we'll wait until you can have five to 10,000 in there? It's a really interesting question. And I think it, it's a question that kind of affects every part of the pandemic handling. I mean, I suspect had people felt so strongly that they wanted to challenge some of the rules in courts of law, they might have had more success than people anticipated. Um, no. But the other thing I know is that the AFL uh, is trying to be very, their strategy is to be very respectful to governments of all colours and not to preempt uh, any announcements there. So I imagine they'll be working in line with Daniel Andrews and the Victorian government. Tredis, did you have anything before we moved on from this? Yeah, well, boys, also, too, a little bit of insight in South Australia, too, is there was the big march and protests on the weekend where I think about 10,000 people marched. So it, it does, understandably, that's political and obviously, obviously got to going all around the world at the moment. But the argument was put, then, how can 10,000 people march in, in close proximity and not be sitting at a football event in close proximity? So whilst the second march has been not, um, said by the police that it won't be uh, legal to do, um, this is a bit of pressure that actually happened in Adelaide over the last week. And what you're finding too, federal government is saying, let's start to open up and get the economy going and generate things. The state government are all manipulating and and moving the chess pieces around each other. And it's almost a game, a little bit of chicken to say who goes where. So South Australia weren't gonna do it. All of a sudden they've gone first. Queensland have backed away. You know, before we know it, I think we'll, we'll get some sort of normality back uh, across, across the board of AFL, which I think will be a positive, but it's just gonna take some time. 
certainly feels good to be moving in that direction matches then supporters and and life back to some sort of normality two things before we go i'm going to ask you each for a guaranteed winner uh, for this round round two of the 2020 season but first it's time for the social club where we recognize a strong use of social media and this actually is a strong use of social media in reply so roll our first tweet which is jared walsh a adelaide media personality on radio who tweeted, and I'll read it, if both Port Adelaide and Adelaide fans are allowed into the Adelaide Oval, can people be let in at three quarter time to replace the Crows fans that usually <laughs> leave? Obviously a Port fan there, uh, Jared, having a crack at the Crows. Well, Tex Walker, leader there at Adelaide, he hit back by saying, or you could just cover up the seats with tarps to make it look like you have supporters, much of a muchness, <laughs> I suppose, having a dig. And then the final person who really gets inducted into the social club is this tweet at Warren Treadray with the famous picture of Tex having a froth at the Adelaide Oval and the line, grab a beer and sort it out, lads. A nice tasty dig from a Port Adelaide great to an Adelaide great there, Treadray. That's, that, that, that's quite funny, Warren. That's the first time I've seen that. That's not bad from you. I Oh, I'm actually surprised it's the first time I've ever been funny and made myself laugh. But what I would say is have a look at the rough heads that Tex Walker's sitting with a couple of Broken Hills finest. And then I texted him last night. He goes, oh, you don't weigh into this one. As he's sitting there watching Home and Away, who even watches that show? I didn't know it was on air still. <laughs> uh, hang on. To the Broken Hill people. Sam, you mentioned you, you hadn't seen that tweet. Surely you follow, follow Treaders on Twitter. Uh... I don't think I'd actually. Oh, I'm just having, I'm just having a look. Hang on, I'm just having a look too. Is not good enough. Hang on. Oh, splinter here in the I, team. I better, I, I we're better have follow him, yeah. themes in, I think, and bring us a bit closer together if this is the case. Oh, um, mate. I better, I better follow him now. <laughs> actually, <laughs> you've guilted him into it, Treaders. Yeah. He follow said, I'm following you. There you go. Welcome to the club. Yep. No, 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 mate. No, no, no. Uh, not yet. You follow look. me, but I oh, don't follow no, you. Look. Oh, look. Look. It just popped up. You followed me. This is, there it is. Oh, there we go. The team is all together now. That's the way to go. And you know, well, and you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to unfollow right now. Wait, <laughs> yeah. right, Treaders, you've only got 30,000 followers. What's going on? What do you got? 29. That's less than me, mate. Oh, I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't check how many followers I have. Oh. You just did, mate. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> One guarantee is that you'd like to continue having this conversation for the rest of the season. I'm looking forward to that. But Sam, who is your guaranteed winner for round two, 2020? Uh, GWS. They will not lose to North Melbourne. I like it. Treaders, you got one? Oh, I feel sorry for the Suns. Even on their home debt, the Eagles are going to smash them. And I'm going to take the Cats. I just see the train at Cadinia Park rolling on over Jeffrey and the Hawthorne Football Club. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you for your time. The Port Adelaide champion, Warren Treadrate. Hey, footy's back. We might actually have to keep continuing this into the summer. And the man with 29,000 followers, which is quite an impressive tally, more than me at least, the chief footy reporter at the Nine Network, Sam McClure. Thanks, Seb. I always enjoy your tweets now. I get to look at one. <laughs> we'll see you next week. on Stay Talk tuned. Now.